Hi, my name's Bob Grunier, and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. So we have received the treated nickel meshes and the untreated nickel meshes from Thomas uh, Acker Me356 in the Czech Republic. And I have put those on the scanning electron microscope here in Alan Goldwater's Magic Sound in Santa Cruz in California. And I have to give full credit to Thomas. He's done a fantastic job in the production of these meshes. So first up, uh, we can see here the SEM image. This is one millimeter full scale here. So this is at point one of a millimeter here. So, so that is the kind of scale of the wire that was used. And you can see that the untreated wire is basically nickel and you have some carbon and oxygen on the surface. That might be as a result of some sort of oils or something used in the processing uh, production of the nickel mesh, or it might be absorbed or adsorbed from the environment. Anyway, uh, that's what we see on the mesh, and I can zoom into that a little bit. Here we go at 250 times, and this is using the secondary electron uh, images from the TM3030 plus Hitachi desktop microscope that Alan Goldwater has. And you can see here close. And this is possibly, I would suggest, uh, some oils left over from manufacturing. And that might account for the carbon that you see here. Now, uh, there's another shot here looking close in. And this is the shot that was used for the analysis over there on the left. So it's really rather pure apart from that contamination on the surface. Now here is the carbon tape in the middle and on the right hand side I have the untreated mesh and on the left I have, have the treated mesh and you can see that these look very very different. Okay, In the optical image in a previous video you could see that the treated mesh looked a little bit darker than the untreated mesh. Uh, perhaps that was the oil reflecting, or perhaps that is just the specularity difference between the two metals here, although the bulk of the metal is still nickel, as you will see, uh, or rather the substrate is, but you won't necessarily see that it is uh, uh, mostly nickel, but it still contains nickel, should I say. And um, This is again the secondary uh, electron image, and it gives us this uh, nice three-dimensional spatial sort of uh, ability to see structure and that's the advantage of the secondary electron gun. Now the backscatter image is here and you see a little less than you do on the secondary image of the form and you lose the uh, carbon tape form here but you can see that this is darker and when you're using a BS uh, image, a backscatter image, and that's giving you an indication of the elements. And so what you are essentially seeing is that in this case, this is a, a lighter uh, element and this is a heavier element. So this was very encouraging to see. Now, um, if I then bring up the next image, this is the image of the treated mesh, so I will um, we'll look at the SEM uh, and EDS uh, analysis in a second, but this is the SEM image, and if I go forward, that is, so this one uh, is just a, uh, over illuminated on the backscatter image, so I went to the uh, secondary electron image, so you can see more form here, and you can see clearly that for the prone pieces of metal, uh, there seems to be either some damage or it didn't adhere to that. And that might actually be maybe where the oil was or something. But anyway, something has certainly uh, deposited itself. And uh, there are different areas of that deposit. But this is from the edge of this large mesh that I showed in a previous video. And uh, Thomas uh, stated that the processing is consistent, absolutely consistent from edge to edge. And he shared with me, which I'll share with you, a image of the plasma processing that goes on. 
and essentially um, these uh, meshes are processed via plasma in a uh, he claims uh, that it is a third party that is doing the manufacturing uh, to his specification and so this is a repeatable manufacturing process so if this works this is a very very good development because this doesn't um, require any kind of a, uh, how should we put this uh, interpretation of what you should do and Thomas has said that for serious people that want to replicate this he will provide also meshes to them and he is claiming that if a procedure is followed a simple procedure you should see a COPF2 and when I'm looking at this mesh up close I'm inclined to think that if something could do it this might be it so what you're seeing here is the carbon tape and uh, the adhesive squeezing up through this so ignore that uh, it's these things that we're interested in the actual mesh itself that's treated okay so if we zoom in you can see here that there's definitely this area that either for some reason it didn't attach to it or it's been damaged by having another mesh and some sort of movement on the top has abraded it off but anyway there it is and we can go right into this and what we see is this kind of cracked structure on here and also this very sort of a uh, uh, it's almost like wheat thrown down on a uh, marble floor a little flex going on here and this reminds me a little bit of the electro deposition of the plates for palladium deposition for the plates in uh, Roy Shinamaza's vibrator system however this is much finer and this really does look if we go into even more detail here this really does look like this has all of the desirable features you would want for improving um, the process of adsorption and absorption, uh, catalytic aspects of it, but also the robustness as it would heat up. So by having it uh, adhered to nickel, you have a, a material that is magnetic, uh, ferromagnetic, and that is uh, able to interact with clusters if that's what's going on. But interestingly, it also is a catalyst for the, um, the splitting of hydrogen. And obviously palladium, as defined by Thomas Graham, FRS, fellow of the Royal Society, I think in 1876, I talked about this before, he showed that palladium was the element that is, can absorb the most hydrogen isotope, or of course deuterium wasn't discovered then, but uh, of any of the elements in the periodic table. The good thing here is that if any of this palladium becomes active, it has this wonderful heat sink of this large body of this uh, nickel to dissipate the heat away from it. So um, it, it could help it stay within the active temperatures that are necessary. And uh, it also avoids sintering going on. So there's a lot to be said for this. And with the original Mizuno, Mizuno was actually trying to do something similar to this inside a cell but it's a very small amount of material that's produced uh, that could become active. So he then went and produced this uh, hand abraded mesh, which makes a larger area, but it's less precise and there's more areas for error. With what Thomas has done here, he's able to mass produce this extremely consistent material. And it is, I tell you, he said it was edge to edge, this is edge to edge. And so uh, he has to be commended for this. And if, as he says, it's, it's produced by a contracted third party, this is something that can be um, really scaled up very, very quickly. Uh, it's, it's, you know, because it's a defined uh, process that produces a reliable output. So let's have a look at the actual um, analysis. So when we look at the analysis here, um, I've got two boxes here, you'll get these documents. Um, the one that's on the bit that looks like it might be rubbed off, this has 60.89% uh, palladium, 
12.21% uh, nickel, and then 19.48 carbon and 7.43 oxygen. The area where we've got this like uh, frosting going on, almost like icing sugar thrown down uh, onto a cake, you might imagine it, um, that's nearly 72% palladium is what the gun from the SEM is seeing. And then 12.2% nickel and the oxygen is uh, comparable and the carbon is a little bit up. So, um, uh, sorry, sorry, the, <laughs> I've got that wrong. Uh, the uh, palladium is 72%, as I said. The nickel goes down to about half. The oxygen's about the same, but the carbon has dropped by six and a bit percent. So this is really, really rather fine what he has achieved here. And of course, palladium being expensive, uh, this would mean that you're using a lot less palladium in your uh, process. And so, I, you know, really well done, uh, Thomas. This is excellent work. And so you can see here, over that area um, where I've got a map here, this section here that spans this area, you can see that the palladium really is very consistent across the surface uh, with a slight increase over here. And I've done a number of samples over here. And again, from these top areas, it's in the late 60s, but it, you know, again, it gets up to the 71% here for one of the samples in this area where you've got the, the icing on the cake, as it were. So uh, yeah, just look at those images again. Um, I'll take them up to full screen here. So uh, uh, go back to the beginning here. So this is the untreated mesh, uh, which is essentially nickel wire. And that has some contamination on, probably from manufacture, um, some oil maybe on there. And so that's as it is. And then the, this is the untreated mesh, the treated mesh on the left. So you can see here on the backscattered image, it's definitely a, a heavier element that is uh, presenting to the electron gun. And so when we look through this, you can see it's very, very consistent. And this is right on the edge of the sample. And we go in and we go in and we go in and uh, we see this lovely, lovely kind of icing sugar frosting on the cake um, and yes that is very very encouraging so well done Thomas uh, I uh, um, am very impressed with what you've done here and if it does yield uh, excess as you claim then I believe that people should uh, replicate this uh, if you are in a position and capable to do so um, Let's see how our replication goes. Uh, we've done a lot of calibrations. Alan's been calibrating for nearly a week, and this is built on the R20 reactor, which was uh, testing the Mizuno uh, hand um, palladium coated uh, nickel mesh. And so um, look out for the live documents <clears throat> on... Um, quantumheat.org and on the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Projects um, Facebook and Twitter and there will be these images available for you to look at also and the documents of the analysis so look out for links to those in the coming days um, hopefully we will do a live um, presentation tomorrow um, on the experiment uh, we shall see Thank you very much for your time and I will see you in the next video.